Welcome back to Ismail Musa TV. Welcome back to Ismail Musa TV. Alright, rock and roll to the okay, world. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Our lesson you are with the Ismail day. Musa TV. Let's do one uh, thing at a time. You... Is all about the beauty of code. It's actually code and cryptography. Right? So. Codes were already around since ancient times. A code is simply a symbolic way to represent an information in a qualitative inquiry. Before going further, let me read to you the objective of the lesson. At the end of the lesson, of this lesson, student must be able to, one, you, you should be able to describe uh, some coding schemes that are used to assign identification numbers. Use check digits for detection. Discuss the process of disguising data. Analyze encrypted data. And hopefully number five, you could participate actively in a cryptography project in modern application. Okay, so this is actually our learning objectives based on our syllabus. Okay, there, you can read it. Use coding schemes to encode and decode different types of information for identification, for privacy, and security purposes. So, the, the, the core... The core idea here is for you to utilize, no, for utility of mathematics, no, the utility of mathematics goes beyond the mundane. Mathematics enables the development of codes and ciphers that are useful to individuals and to society. So in this lesson, we will try to incorporate the following topics, binary codes, integers in computers, logic and computer addition, text data, errors and error detection, error detecting codes, repeti repetition and humming codes. And hopefully, uh, as I said, no, you will be experiencing uh, modern, modern application of cryptography nowadays. Now, but what is really a code and what is cryptography? Okay. Hmm. Welcome back to Spa. Okay. So, as I said earlier, Codes were around since ancient times. A code is a symbolic way to represent an information in a qualitative inquiry. A code is most often a word or a short phrase symbolically assigns a summative salient essence of language based on visual data. Now, code is helping us to keep Something secure means that a way that no one would ever see or find, but sometimes keeping it beyond the understanding of others. Code not only keep things secure, but as well as keeping everything <clears throat> in order and systematic way. Okay. Anyway, let me give you a BG on this. Imagine two people who share an important secret have to split up. This requires them to communicate private information from a distance. However, an eavesdropper named Eve also wants this information and has the ability to intercept their messages. 
So Alice decides to communicate using letters written in some kind of secret code. The following analogy is helpful. First, Alice locks her message in a box using a lock that only her and Bob know the combination to. Mm -hmm. This is known as encryption. That's encryption! Then the locked message is sent to Bob. When Bob receives the box, he opens it using the code they shared in advance. Okay. This is called decryption. Decryption! Cryptography begins when we abandon physical locks and use ciphers instead. Okay. Think of them as virtual locks. Okay. Ciphers allow Alice and Bob to scramble and descramble their messages so that they would appear meaningless if they right. intercepted them. Cryptography has been around for thousands of years. It has decided wars and is at the heart of the worldwide communication network today. The fascinating story of cryptography requires us to understand two very old ideas related to number theory and probability theory. You see, that's mathematics. Thank you for the video. Right, no? So, code not only keep things secure, but as well as keeping everything in order and systematic. Now, as we said, no, instead of writing the entire name of location or initials, uh, we can simply, what? Assign zip code, no? Instead of the name of the product itself, corresponding number is assigned. Or the location can be given a zip code. So, there are many ways... There are many other uses of codes which bring forth systems and order and security to its use. That's the most important thing, no? We should be able to come up with systems, and these systems provide order and security to its uses. Now, uh, as they say, diplomats and military personnel sometimes engage in uh, highly confidential matters, that they need to send information securely by using secret codes. The process of encoding messages through secret code is called encryption. All right. So codes were already around since ancient times. You see? A code is a symbolic way to represent information. So, in a qualitative inquiry, a code is most often a word or a short phrase that symbolically assigns a summative, salient, essence capturing, and or evocative attribute for a portion of language based on a visual data. That's according to Saldana in 2013. Okay. Now, you are saying, sir, ancient time? Yes. No? During ancient time. The hieroglyphics, no, or a sacred writings. Can you this this figures class? Huh? So during ancient times, codes were already used by humans, no. The hieroglyphics or the sacred writings were codes used by ancient Egyptian in the writing system. Yes. The Roman numer the Romans, no. The Romans also. We have the Roman numerals were developed to easily determine the price of commodities and service rendered by the Romans. So we have Roman numerals were used throughout the Europe up until 1600s. Now, the Roman numerals is also another oldest number system which came from ancient Egypt. Okay. So these are examples of ancient Egyptian hieroglyphic, no? hieroglyphic numeral system. Okay, so you have there 1, 10, 100, uh, yes, that's 1,000. <laughs> okay, this one is 10,000. This seems to be a prog, but that's 100,000. So this is 1 million. See, so a combination of all these numerals in uh, ancient Egyptian hieroglyphic numeral systems will give you this number, okay? 
So, you add all this, will give you 258,458. Just imagine how 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 many symbols they have to use, no? Just to write 258,458. Thanks to Encyclopedia Britannica Incorporated for this picture. Okay, let me show another. You see? Yeah. Uh, you see how beautiful their Roman numer their numerals, no? the Egyptian, the ancient Egyptian numerals. Well, if you ask me if this is preserved, I think so. Uh, there are some t-shirts available in Egypt. If you have family there, you can order. They are still fun of using these symbols. No, but you see, oh, that's 21,237. Okay. So, uh, with the earliest record of being recorded, no, this these symbols has been utilized and accordingly it was used sometimes in 3000 BC or even over 5000 years ago. So the Egyptian counting system was very comprehensive compared to others. All right. Now, hmm, who are fan of making shoppings? Yes, you know this, no? T-shirts. Now, the label shown onto a t-shirt has information on the broad public composition and country where the item was manufactured. So the code is like attribute code for the clothing item's content. Yes, the the, the most recent the most recent uh the most recently invented codes are the musical scores the genetic codes and the DNA or the deoxyribonucleic acid no so that is the most recently invented codes no hmm. so we have here the DNA structure uh, accordingly every human beings have a very unique DNA structure ah so before we proceed further, let's go back to mathematics. What can you see now in our screen? Yes, zero one zero one zero one zero one zero one. Don't you know, class, that mathematics is the universal language, and that because of zero and one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People communicate around the world simply by zero and one. Now let's talk about this zero and one. We call this the binary number system. The decimal number system was not suitable for designing electronic equipment because it was difficult to make electronic equipment working on 10 different values. So the binary system consists of only two digits, zero and one. It is also a positional value system comprising two as based and so requiring only two digits, zero and one. In computer technology or information theory, zero and one can be represented as zero open or absence of electric pulse, one is close, presence of electric pulse. So an information can be just sent by a computer or, inf or gadgets by means of zero and one. But later, it would be converted by the computer system into certain language that are understandable to human mind. So, let's say these numbers. Huh? So, that is actually 22. Right? So, 1 times 2 raised to 4 plus 0 times 2 cubed plus 1 times 2 square plus 1 times 2 plus 0 times 2 raised to 0. Uh, if you add them, that's actually 16 plus 0 plus 4 plus 2. It is actually 22 under base 10. No? So, 22, if it is base 10, but under base binary system, it's 10110. Okay? So, another example there. 10.3125 uh, no? under base 10. That can be written. Uh, as shown in our PowerPoint presentation, there as 1010.0101. Okay, now, 
how do we convert numbers from any base, example, base 10, into base 2? Just to rewind, I, I think you have learned this in your high school, but to recall, oh, so 13, for example, the number 13 in binary. So 13 divided by 2, the remainder is 1. No? Of course, 13 divided by 2, it's 6. The remainder is 1. So we, ha we have 6. 6 divided by 2, it's 3. The remainder is 0. 3 divided by 2, 1. The remainder is 1. Therefore, copying those uh, remainders, we have 1, 0, 1, 1. So 13 base 10 can be written as 1, 1, 0, 1 under base 2. Okay? So that's basically uh, the how how we use numbers as a code. Okay, we can we can change you no know, systems of number systems from one system to different number system. But basically, uh, in computer technology and electro electronic technology, they are using the binary system. But uh, there are also other other means no, that we use codes, uh, a combination of numbers and letters. For example, in identification numbers, identification, or what we call the verification. Uh, so, yes, in the Philippines, we're using it. Our your your car, our car plate, oh, ba? Yung mga, the plate of our cars. Example there. JXK980, matatag na republika. This was issued sometimes in 2012. Oh, there, no? So, you can text LTO, and when you send that, that uh, car code, or you call it the plate numbers, so you can get a verification via text from LTO. And, and this was developed sometimes in 2009, no? The system of LTO bring a lot of convenience to car owners as it allows them to check plate numbers only in a flash. Why? Because you have to key in the statement, LTO vehicle plate number of your car, sent to 2600. If you want to try, well, try it at your own risk. <laughs> yes, you, yeah, you can send to number 2600. Uh, definitely, uh, Example, no, there, LTO vehicle na a A31. Definitely, LTO will reply to your, 2600 will reply to your, to your inquiry. Okay, so, for example, there, uh, what is shown is the make, Volkswagen, the model, beaten or the year, 1973, color blue, registered last, okay. So, all informations are provided. Of course, you will be charged for 2 pesos. That's the wonderful thing with the beauty of codes. No, the beauty of codes and cryptography. Now, yes, identification number. Huh? The identification numbers are used to identify individuals, the person, or items, specific products, people, account, or documents. So, example, uh, the numeric identification number, our TIN number, our TIN. Or the tax identification number, our school ID, our bank account, no? they are in numeric. While the alphanumeric uh, identification number, as I said earlier, vehicle plate, and even your password. When you make your password, you are fan of alphanumeric. Okay, let me just show you. There, huh? this is an example of a TIN number. If you want to... Know your TIN or you want to apply, you can visit my YouTube. You can click on this link. The link, the link is also provided in my Isma Al Musa video YouTube. I I provided a a TIN verification system. You you may check it out. Okay. Now, yes, the the products in most of our what. Uh, malls or stores, you can see this, no? Uh, we call this the universal product codes. Okay. So you have there, uh, I think, how many digits? There are uh, 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, usually 12 digits, no? The UPC codes are in 12 digits. It provides the company prefix, the product number, and the most important there is the check digit. Okay. Yeah. I have said the most important there is the check digit. Let's talk about that later. Now, why not a UPC code? Well, UPC symbols will help us uh, identify the company prefix, no? which can be 6 to 10 digits long. Then the UPC barcodes always encode exactly 12 numeric digits. Okay? So you have there an example of a 6-digit company prefix, example of a 9-digit company prefix. All right. So there are two. We have the UPC and the EAN. All right. But uh, both share the same concept. Now, American standard UPC have 12 digits and usually they arrange like this. You have the product code and the last one is the check digits. So the first 11 digits form the product code and they are the trailing digits called the check digit. Digits in the add positions are highlighted in a green, no? just just for, for presentation herein. The product code has six add digits and five even digits. No? The remaining digits are even positions. All right. Now, as I said, no, uh, we can check whether the digit is correct or not. No, a check digit, the one that is in blue. A check digit, also known as checksum character, is a number located on the far right side of a barcode. The purpose of a check digit is to verify that the information on the barcode has been entered correctly. Okay. That's why it's called check digit. The barcode reader's decoder calculates the checksum by performing series of mathematical operations on the digits that precede the check digit and comparing the result of the calculation to the value of the check digit. Typically, if the check digit matches the result of the calculation, the reader emits a signal such as BIP to acknowledge that the result match and the scan has been successful. Now, how do we compute the check digits? Right, let me show you. So, there are five steps. This is the process. You can just read it for yourself. But what is more important there is in this lesson, in our subject, is the modulo 10. What's basically modulo? Now, I am sure you have, you can remember your high school days. Yes, no, I bet you learned this in your uh, junior, junior school before you learn about decimal fractions. Mm-hmm. Yes, what's modulo? Modulo is nothing but uh, a remainder from a whole number when you divide it by 10 or division by 10. Okay? Now, let's say, for example, this number. We want to see whether this ISBN is correct. So, the first 12 digits, X and their multiples and the results. Okay? Now, what do we do? We add the results. No? So first is, uh, the first digit is multiplied by 1. Then the third, the second digit is multiplied by 3. So, diba? 9 times 1 is 9. 7 times 3, 21. So, 8 is another odd digits. So this is ISBN, huh? this is ISBN. Okay. So that's how we we check the digits no? under ISBN. So the first digit is multiplied by 1, the event digit is multiplied by 3. Okay? You do that, then add all the results, you get 118. Now, you do modulo 10 and under modulo 10 of 118 will give you a remainder of 8. So, work out the check digits. If 8 doesn't equal to 0, so check digit is 10 minus 8. So, 
Therefore, this ISBN is correct. Yeah, you see the last number is 2. So, then definitely this is a, a good ISBN. Okay. Now, for UPC, so other than ISBN, we have also UPC. Now, this is how we do it no? in computation for the UPC. Okay. So, determine the check digit D for the UPC number. Uh, example, this is the UPC number. 2356712894 and D. Okay, well, there are 12 numbers. So, under UPC, so it's American. Okay. So, all you have to do is add. You have to add the uh, add positions. So, what are these add positions? The first digit, the third digit, the fifth digit, the seventh digit, the ninth digit. Okay. So, what's the first digit? 2. So, 2. The, the, sec the third digit is 5. The fifth digit is 7. Okay? So, 2 plus 5 plus 7 plus 2 plus 9 plus 2 will give you 27. Multiply this by 3. Yeah? So, 27 times 3 is 81. Then, for the even position digits, you just add them. Yeah? And don't add, of course, the last digit, which is the D. Then you get 22. Add them together. 81 plus 22. You get 103. So, therefore, 103. What numbers you are to add to 103? So that under modulo 10, you get a remainder of 0. <clears throat> of course, you add 7. So, D, therefore, is 7. Okay? So, the check digit for that is 7. Okay? So, 103, the modulo 10 is 7. No? What number you add to 103 to make the remainder 0 is 7. So, under UPC, so that 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 8, 9, 4, 2, the last, the check digit is 7. Now, let me show you my favorite snack, Super Crunch. <laughs> okay, can you see it? There, there's a barcode. No? There's a code there. Four eight hundred three six five one zero one two zero eight. Is eight there a correct check digit? Nah, you can do the computation. Huh? So as shown in my screen, so the first digit, the 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 add position digits. Huh? You add them, you get fourteen. Multiply that by three, you get forty two. Then add those even digit. 8 plus 0 plus 6 plus 1 plus 1. You get 16. Uh, so the result of 42 plus 16, you get 58. So under modulo 10, 58, you have 8. So 8, therefore, as a checksum here, is correct. So this is a correct code for this product item okay so that's how important no this is also for traceability okay cl class uh there's also what we call barcode no yes no barcode it's barcode barcode is uh simply an optical machine uh, it's an optical machine readable representation of data a barcode is a set of vertical bars long and short and spaces which provide indispensable tool for tracking of a variety of data from pricing to inventory. It was first used in June 26, 1974. June 26, 1974, with a 10-pack Wrigley Joycey fruit gum. You know? Cashiers in most establishments make use of automatic, automated cash registers. Decoding information in a barcode is done through the use of handy scanner. Right? You go to SM Mall, KCC Mall, Shaporama. They don't anymore input the numbers of the 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 numbers of the assigned to products. They simply use a barcode reader and immediately ting ting you have the prices. Okay? So where are we? The term barcoding is an efficiency way of translating data instantaneously and accurately. It is used for automated data collection. It eliminates the occurrence of human error 
since through the use of bar scanner, transmitting data is faster and more reliable and takes lesser time than entering them manually. Of course, uh, we, we are not saying that it's full proof. Barcode reader may, may also commit errors by not reading the the barcode if it is not encoded in the system. Anyway, uh, so later a two-dimensional 2D variants were developed using rectangle dots, hexagons, and other geometric patterns called matrix codes or the 2D barcodes. Uh, like this, bow. Okay. Yes, you call them the QR code. So we have the the stick the maxi code and the quick response the qr code no? the qr code so it is used for automated data collection in businesses even today in medical purposes uh, due to that covid-19 pandemic we are using a what an id with a barcode indicating that you have been vaccinated so these are some types of barcode available to us Okay, I hope you get me, no? Now, going back, uh, I, I said earlier we have that UPC and EA, EAN. So, IAN class is an international article number known as European article number or EAN. No? Yung kanina kasi American. So, we have also African. It's a number system in global trade to identify specific retail product type in a specific uh, retail product type in a specific packaging configuration from a specific manufacturer. So, for example, this one, uh, this product, Milo. So, there is a specific numbers for that, no, assigned to it. We call this the EAN 13 format barcodes. Huh? And it has been used throughout the rest of the world. While UPC 12 is used in USA, also in the Philippines. So the first three digits of EAN 13 represents the country code. Now the country code for the Philippines is 480 class. Huh? 480. Now, the check digit formula for EAN 13, uh, we have done this earlier. So yung, yung EAN, it's the check digit, which is the D13, is added no so you saw that so yung yung d1 which is the first digit is not multiplied it's the second digit that's multiplied by three okay so yung even yung upc yung odd okay now add that and when it is divisible by 10 so the last digit or the the, the d13 is must be divisible by 10. So it can be observed that in a UPCA code, the odd number digits are multiplied by 3. While the EN13 code, the even numbers are digits are multiplied by 3. Take note of that. Now I said earlier, yes, the Philippines, uh, it's assigned for 80. So examples of EN13 check digits, no? Show that the EN13 barcode of the following Philippine made products are valid using the EN13 check digit formula. For example, we have the Goldilocks Pinoy Daily Line 150 gram. Okay, if this is the check, if this is the barcode, if the EN13, if this is the EN13 barcode, now we can check, no? So, as I said, in the EN, we multiply the even digits. Okay, so 4 plus so, 8 is the even digit multiplied by 3 plus 0 uh, plus, of course, you don't need to multiply 0 by 3 plus 1 plus 3 times 1 plus 1 plus 0, 0. Of course, uh, 9 there is an even digit. Okay, 3 times 9 plus 9 plus 0 plus 1 will give you 17, so which is divisible by 10. Therefore, the EN13 barcode above is the product a valid product code okay now uh, going back our lesson is really about cryptography so the study of methods to write and solve secret codes is called cryptography no cryptographic programs prevent hackers from using your email address or making calls 
using your mobile number to access private information. Cryptography is also used to determine the first-hand data communicated through electronic transactions. Now, let's watch this movie for a while. The first well-known cipher, a substitution cipher, was used by Julius Caesar around 58 BC. It is now referred to as the Caesar cipher. Caesar shifted each letter in his military commands in order to make them appear meaningless should the enemy intercept it. Imagine Alice and Bob decided to communicate using the Caesar cipher. First, they would need to agree in advance on a shift to use, say 3. So to encrypt her message, Alice would need to apply a shift of 3 to each letter in her original message. So A becomes B, B becomes E, C becomes F, and so on. This unreadable or encrypted message is then sent to Bob openly. Then Bob simply subtracts the shift of 3 from each letter in order to read the original message. Incredibly, this basic cipher was used by military leaders for hundreds of years after Caesar. I have forces and won, but I haven't conquered over 92, which is impossible. However, a lock is only as strong as its weakest point. A lock breaker may look for mechanical flaws, or failing that, extract information in order to narrow down the correct combination. The process of lock breaking and code breaking are very similar. The weakness of the Caesar cipher was published 800 years later by an Arab mathematician named al -Kindi. He broke the Caesar cipher by using a clue based on an important property of the language a message is written in. If you scan text from any book and count the frequency of each letter, you will find a fairly consistent pattern. For example, these are the letter frequencies of English. This can be thought of as a fingerprint of English. We leave this fingerprint when we communicate without realizing it. This clue is one of the most valuable tools for a code breaker. To break this cipher, they count up the frequencies of each letter in the encrypted text and check how far the fingerprint has shifted. For example, if H is the most popular letter in the encrypted message instead of E, then the shift is likely 3. So they reverse the shift in order to reveal the original message. Okay. It's called frequency analysis, and it was a blow to the security of the Caesar cipher. Okay, so frequency analysis. No? Thank you for watching. Now, that's cryptography. Today, class, cryptography is one of the most powerful tool in not just in communication, but in protecting the identity of the person. And nowadays, the existence of the concept of the cryptography is also into the monetary system. Okay. So, funds transferred from one country to another country is through a decentralization, what we call cryptocurrency. So, that is what you are experiencing now. Is an example of a cryptocurrency. So with this, you are to conduct the following project. No? You can select six, any of the six crypto project no, that you may undertake. So what are these? Uh, but you have to pass no, the KYC. What's KYC, sir? Know your customer. Yeah? So one, uh, you can apply for an online banking, no? On Union Bank Online or any prepared bank you want, but this is optional because this if you do this activity, uh, it is at your own risk. You can also do the the one that you are doing core mining. That's an example of a cryptography. No? So it's recommendatory. You can also apply for an account in Coins PH. Coins PH. It's another. A wallet system that is utilized in the Philippines. No, you can op open an account there. 
but that's optional at your own risk. Uh, you can also open Fedux. No, it's Fedux. This is another exchange, uh, monetary exchange that is allowed in the Philippines. But uh, again, this is an optional project at your own risk. You can open your membership in Pi Network. It's re recommendatory. Uh, I would also recommend if you want to have experience the real cryptography or codes and cryptography project, you can apply at Maya. However, this is also at your own risk. Now, for any of those you want to experience, Inquire me for a link, okay? Now, I said optional, that is at your own risk. This means that these online systems are truly monitored by the Central Bank of the Philippines or subject to legal laws in our country. While recommendatory, this, this indicates that these projects are secure, decentralized, and there are no legal issue in the Philippines, okay? So if you have questions about the projects, feel free to PM me anytime so goodbye before you go before you go can you please welcome back to ismail musa click that notification bell and subscribe to ismail musa tv bye bye